Honourable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Cabinet colleagues, Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition and Abstentia, Honourable Members of the Western Cape Provincial Parliament, Officials of the Western Cape Government, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is my privilege to present the adjusted estimates for the Department of Transport and Public Works for 2016-17. The Adjustments Budget Process is as honourable members of this House will know, an important tool in the management of a range of circumstances as stipulated in the PFMA. Circumstances which have arisen since the tabling and acceptance of the main budget. Given the wide-ranging nature and scope of the services provided by my department, including broad support for a number of the seven game changes to which the Western Cape is committed, it is inevitable that a number of adjustments will occur and will have to be accommodated and accounted for. Speaker, the budget of my department of 6.788 billion increases by just over 304 million to 7.7 billion, 92.664 million. The amount is made up from rollovers of the previous financial year, a relatively small amount of 25.1 million, Revenue retention from previous financial years, mainly related to increased own revenue from over-collected motor vehicle license fees of 243.177 million and shifts between programs of 35.857 million. If I start with the rollovers from the previous financial year, of the 25.102 million, 2 million rolled over from the previous year to support the enhancement of the Microsoft Enterprise Project Management System to respond to departmental specific needs. Then 1.622 million from the previous financial year to provide for the development of a better living model as a key game changer intervention of the Western Cape Government. Thirdly, 1.263 million rolled over from the previous year to subsidize the Drakenstein municipality for the upgrade of municipal proclaimed road MR208. Then, Speaker, 717,000 rolled over to provide for the reseal of the Endercal Head Kreis Kirom Road. Then 17 million rolled over from the previous year for road safety marketing projects, inclusive of monthly radio campaign, high quality television commercials, community based and social media initiatives and research. And then under this category, 2.5 million rolled over from the previous year to support the mini bus taxi, metered taxi and small bus operators. Then from increased own revenue, uh, 15.746 million, 7.746 million reallocation of an unspent transfer amount received from the City of Cape Town to provide for additional routine road maintenance projects on the provincial proclaimed road network. And then 8 million from increased motor vehicle license fees collections to provide for agency fees payable to municipalities. Speaker, then the shifting of funds between votes, 35.857 million, 1.016 million shifted from vote one, the Department of the Premier, for the installation of a perimeter fence and electric gate at the Provincial Training Institute, and then a debit balance, 5.651 million shifted to vote one, Department of the Premier, as a contribution towards the procurement of ICT infrastructure to finalize projects on the modernization program. Then, Speaker, 30 million shifted from Vote 5 education for the continued provision of co-funding for the implementation unit capacity to deliver education infrastructure relating to new schools and maintenance. Then 9.7 million shifted from Vote 5 education for the acquisition of land for educational purposes and 792,000 from vote five for additional accommodation for education. The next category then the asset financing reserve of 75 million, 70 million of that speaker 
from 2014-15 over-collected motor vehicle license fees retained in the asset finance reserve to be transferred to the municipality of George for additional operational and infrastructure support for the George Integrated Public Transport Network, one of our flagship projects. Then 4 million speak over the transfer to the municipality of Stellenbosch for the development of non-motorized transport infrastructure as part of the provincial sustainable transport program. Then 740,000 revenue retention from 2014-15 from motor vehicle license fees retained in the AFR to be utilized for the rollout of district safety plans in order to develop a safe road-based transport system across the Western Cape. And then under this section, finally, 260,000 uh, revenue retention from over-collected motor license fees retained in the asset financing reserve to be utilized for the acquisition of evidentiary breath alcohol testing machines. Speak, if I move on to revenue retention, by far the biggest amount, 152.431 million, 2.548 million uh, of arrear rental fees utilized for payment of rental, arrear rental fees for the Riverlands Primary School in Malmesbury as per court order. 39.951 million from over-collected motor vehicle license fees to be utilized for project C-104, the resealing of Indekail Het Kreis Kierum Road. Then 30 million, also from motor vehicle license fees, basically to be utilized for Project C-8982, reseal of Holgarten Uniondale Road. Then 16.954 million revenue retention from over-collected motor vehicle license fees for Project C821 rehabilitation of the portable Picketburg Road. Speaker then 10 million revenue retention, once again from the same source, motor vehicle license fees, utilized for the maintenance of the average speed over distance system, and 2.3349 revenue retention for the acquisition of kiosks for the distribution network required by the George Integrated Public Transport Network. Next item speakers, 26.934 revenue retention again from motor vehicle license fees utilized for the acquisition of an integrated fare management service required for the George Integrated Public Transport Network. Two further amounts, 695,000 for the installation of video conferencing facilities at Jean Low Traffic College and traffic centers to reduce costs in the future and time traveling for meetings. And then finally, 23 million speaker revenue retention from over-collected motor license fees to be utilized for increased agency fees payable to municipalities in respect of the collection of motor license fees. Speaker, brief glance through the list of adjustments. will identify a number aimed at improving the road network and enhancing safety measures on that network. I would like to take this opportunity of confirming that our intensive holiday season road safety plan is already in operation, but will be officially launched on the 13th of December. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, speaker. speaker, in terms of Section 107 of the Constitution of South Africa, we as public reps, representatives, have to swear faithfulness to the Republic and obedience to the Constitution. And in terms of Section 114 of the Constitution, it is this parliament's role to execute oversight over the executive, and they call it accountability. Now, Speaker, this department, this department received 304 million 136 thousand additional to its existing budget, and as indicated yesterday, 
that uh, this department is responsible for all departments infrastructure and as a result it causes challenges and let me deal with those challenges first of all the minister mentioned about George integrated public transport uh, which I was aimed to be reliable affordable safe convenient and we really support it as a committee we cannot go against anything which is there to better the lives of our people. But what is unacceptable is the fact that hooligans try to destroy that infrastructure, which cost millions of rent to the taxpayers. The other thing which uh, we as a committee is not satisfied with is that the very institution, that organization who managed that, failed to submit financial reports. And uh, the department already extended the due date to obtain those financial reports. And we trust that if they fail again, that the department take action. Then we have uh, had the Seapoint Main Road Tafelberg property. So Order, I, just, I just um, want to say that... Honorable Max, will you, can you kindly take your seat, please? Member Tianki, if I need to address you, interjections are allowed, but please try not to be disruptive. I know you have lots of good words and words of appreciation, but if you could contain it till after the sitting, I'm sure it would benefit us all. You may proceed, Minister, um, Honorable Max. Now, the Tafelberg uh, issue was, uh, is a very complicated and a very sensitive issue and a very important issue for different reasons. And uh, the Premier is busy with that particular issue in conjunction with uh, the department and the minister responsible. And uh, regardless of the negative publication in the newspapers, and uh, I believe that the government will make the right decision in the best interest of service delivery and the people of the Western Cape. Then we have schools. We had the situation where Parkview, West Fleer, Williams Valley Primary Schools, Falcon failed to perform accordingly. 106.4 million was the contract and the replacement value as 116.6 million. And on top of that, if Falcon was not good enough, we face another problem where Skosdin's High, Austin Primary, Delft Primary, and Masakanya Primary in Hansby is structurally not safe. Now, this causes a problem for the education department. Because the education department must ensure that our people are educated. And if there are structural problems and people and our children have been deprived of place at risk, that is serious. However, the department explained to us, they followed due process. They did the checks and balances. However, processes are not always 100%. And as a result of things which was beyond their ability, these problems occurred. However, I call on the minister and the department to review those processes to ensure that we are not finding ourselves in the same position. The rail transport. If you read today's newspapers, you will see how the people complained about the congestions on our roads. Public transport is the solution to that problem. And rail transport is one of the biggest transportation of people in the Western Cape. However, the department does not have executive powers over that. It is a national entity and only a consultative. And I must say, I'm very much happy with the presentations by 
uh, the ent entity as well as the department's contribution to facilitate processes. And, uh, but once again, hooligans, criminals, destroying our economy by vandalizing the infra rail infrastructure. And they call on the South African Police Service and my colleague here, uh, Murray, uh, Honorable Member Murray, to uh, put pressure also on the police to put systems in place, their intelligence, so that we can deal with those accordingly. Then we sit with public transport taxi violence. Now the Freigrond issue is an old age issue. And Uber is a new player on, in the game, a new kit on the block. Now Uber also experienced problems. And although the department is saying that they don't have any legal right to intervene because Uber is not, they don't issue licenses to Uber, I appreciate the fact that they say that they do and try everything possible to address the particular issue. Now, the fear is in the concern is that the conflict in Uber can ignite the existing conflict which is already in the taxi fraternity. And that will pose a very serious threat to the safety of our people in the Western Cape. And I, I hope and I trust that uh, the minister will do everything possible in his power to address that particular issue. Now, a very sensitive and a very important issue is road safety, the policing thereof. Now, it was in the papers about how many traffic officers were there, and according to the figures which I've got, there's only 502 operational officers. But we welcome 30 new recruitment appointments, as we said last week on Wednesday. However, it is not enough. But all, we are also very mindful of the financial constraints which our country face, that we cannot employ two, three hundred people at a time because uh, you have to provide them with the necessary equipment. And therefore, we welcome this. But what we are, let me, the other point, licenses, the increase in licenses, driver's licenses, for 2014, 2015 financial year, 294,427 people with new licensed drivers of vehicles added to the roads. And in 2015, 2016, another 280, 270, 71,000 to the roads. It gives you in this two years, financial years, 574,698 new drivers on the road. That is now with the exclusion of those unlawful drivers. And therefore, it's important that there is a proportional link between law enforcement initiatives as well as the increase of uh, drivers to our roads. So, what I... But the problem is we experience, Speaker, those traffic officers, whether they are five or whether they are 200, needs to be managed properly. And therefore, we've got 13 if I'm correct, uh, traffic centers where the managers are responsible to oversee discipline, the operationals, and, and so forth. But we struggle with the department since 2014 to fill those positions. And I cannot be apologetic about that. As a police officer of 27 years, yeah. as a general, I understand the importance of control, command and control. And in the absence of proper supervision, you cannot expect a desired outcome. So I appeal that the minister look into this, put his finger there, and monitor the process. We are being informed that last year the posts were advertised and it was closed on the 27th of September but there were no appointments and it is again advertised. So we hope this time around that that will be because funds were made available. It's not extra money which they are getting. Uh, must, must. But the biggest challenge for the department is whether they've got six, seven, eight hundred 
is to retain them. And the problem is that salaries is the main cause why this department is losing that resource. And salaries is not confined in the minister because it's a provincial entity, provincial function, and a national function. It's determined on a national basis. So for the minister can't put something there to make it more attractive to those officials. And therefore, they become a feeding source for the city. For the city. So the those 30 people which we gained now through the recruitment and training, there's no guarantee that next year we will have still the same amount. Because if there's a vacancy in the city of other municipalities who offer a better salary, they're gone. They're gone. So that is a huge challenge. I just want to say as long as the people of the Western Cape have an insatiable appetite for security, I have an insatiable appetite for the stuff to underwrite that security. So there's one thing which I'm not happy with the department, and that is the Novo. The Novo is a community, a farm community just adjacent to Cry and Tate Speaker. The councillors, one evening when I came from my constituency in Delft about nine o'clock, the councillor called me and said, can you help us? We sit with a problem in the Nova where the Department of Public Works don't know how to listen and assist us. So the next morning I was there. What I found there was this adjacent goat pig and uh, pen poses a serious risk, health risk to the children at the school there. The flies were sitting on the bread of the children. There are heritage, old buildings which uh, is declared as heritage. And there's one wall at the school is about to fall on these children. So, and they indicated a lot of other things. And then I reported to the minister and I called them. I called them. Because to explain what is going on, because we are public representatives you get the word the public protector means the protector of the public i am a public representative where i represent those people of the noble so in this presentation which is of much concern to us the heritage council of the western cape indicated that on the 18th of September 2013, they request a letter in terms of Section 34 from the department, and then those work can be done. On the 20th of September 2016, three years later, the department didn't issue one letter, and it deprives that people of services they are entitled to. Now, Speaker, I cannot tolerate such behavior. I cannot. I am a person who will commend good services, but I cannot accept that a government or official or officials failed for three years to issue one letter which will benefit a community. And I hope that the minister will really investigate that. Speaker, our roads, our roads, really, and that is where I commend this department. I commend this department. Our roads is one of the best in this country. And let me tell you, no, there's, uh, I'm not saying the image is wrong. There's a lot of other factors. What I'm saying is that I'm pleased, and this committee is pleased. Wherever we go, we see development. We see new roads. And that is a force, it's a motivation for the people of the Western Cape that they've got the right government in place. And I want not the, the noble issues to come up. Because when I go to the people outside and I talk about this Western Cape government, I want to tell them this is a government for you. Speaker, um, the government garage. I must say that uh, 
Mr. Kuchlumbuya is a man so near my heart. He is the real manager. You know, nowadays we are very rasmal. He's a white man. But let me tell you, management, leadership, proper financial management, and everything runs well. That government garage is in good hands. But, Speaker, um, I'm very much concerned about um, the fact that Treasury last week indicated that DTPW achieved the lowest percentage of targets of all the departments of 41%. So we did not as a committee receive that report as yet. So I cannot say what went wrong. Maybe the minister, I don't know whether he received it as yet, but they actually produced it to us. But I would like to say that this committee, and I'm as a chairperson, I support this adjustment and the additional money of 304 million. And I trust that this department will utilize it at those challenges which I indicated here. I would like to say, Speaker, a big thank you to my fellow, I almost said comrades, yes. colleagues in this committee, in, uh, in, this, in this committee, in this committee, and also the member, Dagmo, on the other side. You know, people ask, why was Churchill, why was Churchill successful in the World War? He was successful because he listened to his enemy and he believed them. Now, he's not my enemy, member Dagmo, but once he criticized, I listened and I believed him. And I work on those things which he mentioned. So, and I want to say thank you to Mrs. Uh, Shareen Nikak um, for her promptness, professional, and effective conduct, Speaker. She is really an asset, as my colleague, uh, uh, Member uh, Lenton, yesterday mentioned, really an asset to your staff complement. And uh, it is my last speech in this department. And uh, I would like to say to the Minister of Sports and Culture, she is not here present now, that uh, I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to work with that department. However, it must be very clear to people, I work with facts, not personalities. And facts is not right, I scrutinize and interrogate and I cross examine. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Max. Can we get some or can we get some order please? I see the Honorable Doug Moore. Honorable Dianke, allow you. your colleague to speak. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I think we will definitely go back to Hansard one day and read the speech that has just been delivered by Honorable Max again. Because I think when the story is actually told about how our democracy nationally and in this province is maturing and the issue of oversight is discussed and researched, I think that what we have here, and I think that's why in some ways it is actually a tragedy that it appears that the executive-minded uh, leadership of, of the DA has decided who to remove someone who I think without a shadow of a doubt could be described as someone who has lived the issue of oversight. That doesn't mean that that honorable member has given any favors to, to any other political parties, but in fact, I believe, has showed that it is possible um, to be, on the one hand, loyal to your party, 
but also be uncompromising yes. in terms of your role in oversight. We are beginning to see 20 years after democracy, and you look at the different legislators, legislators you even look at the National Assembly, I think the emergence of an encouraging tendency that oversight is in certain areas becoming more robust. And I think provided the oversight doesn't take on factional terms that you might be chairing a committee and be taking on a particular minister because he or she is not in your faction, that the oversight, the, the, the development of our democracy also needs an emergent, strong culture of oversight, irrespective um, of who's involved. And to pay tribute to, to Honorable Member Max and the way that he's led this committee, I think it has been an example, and I think it actually leads to more effective oversight, and it makes sure that that department are much more prepared when they come to those meetings, because they know they are not going to get special protection just because there's someone from the same party as their MEC in the chair. So I think whatever has led to this decision, the internal factional workings, and we all know that uh, Honorable Max, according to the media, teamed up with Tien Sporta, lost out to Honorable Madikizela and um, Bradell and others, and it would seem a pity that because he is now exercising oversight, that because of DA internal factional politics have decided to remove him. But what I know is that even though one might argue from the media, and I'm getting back to this adjustment now because we are dealing with a department that in fact is the worst of all the departments in regard to the second quarter preliminary performance of not meeting its target. So obviously you need to have oversight. But I have full confidence that when MEC Max moves to culture and sport, whether that particular MEC was seen historically or otherwise as part of his grouping or not, I know that he will apply the same oversight there. And I think it's a lesson to all of us, and we respect the role that you've played, and we hope that others, nationally and in other provinces, follow that example from the ANC as well. From the ANC as well, and that's, that's what I'm saying. But, Chair, we are dealing, uh, Speaker, we are dealing with a department who, who in terms of this, uh, adjustment appropriation, I can only describe it as a missed opportunity. As Honourable Member Max has said, this committee, ANC and DA members alike, have been raising since 2014 a very particular issue, and that is the underfunding of provincial traffic officers and their management. This has been a cross-party issue that we've raised, and here we have an adjustment with 304 million rand additional funds coming into this vote. One would at least have expected that the 132 vacancies that there still remains in this Department for Traffic Officers, besides the 30 that have been uh, recently appointed, that this would have been an ideal opportunity to fill them. I'm not sure if all of the members are aware that, in fact, there's been a 57% increase in road fatalities. If you compare November 2015, where there were 107 deaths, when you compare the same month in 2014, there were 68 days. That's a 57% increase. And for December 2015, when there were 131 deaths on our road, there was a 32% increase in road fatalities when compared to December 2014. Now, when you go further into those statistics and you ask who is actually dying on our roads, 80% of those dying on our roads in the Overberg district from 2005 to 2016 are so-called colored and African people. And my question is, to the DA, MEC, and to the Premier, and all of those deciding on budget priorities. If 80% of those being killed on our roads in the Overberg were white South Africans, would we have the same level of lethargy in terms of filling these particular vacancies? And that those, those are real issues that we need to, that we need to focus on. Sorry, um, Honourable Dagmore, if you could take your seat, please, Chief of Wiley. Speaker, you already ruled this morning that these racial allusions that are, are made are unacceptable. Now, that's another classic example to say that we take decisions and we govern on the base of race, which is simply factually incorrect. Honourable Chacha. I, sorry, if it's on the same matter. No, it's on the same matter. Yes. Members, uh, can, can we get some order, please? There's a member on the floor. It's the same matter because members, if they want to have point of views, they must not use as if it's a point of order. It's his views, you know. So, therefore, I'm calling him on point of order because he is wrong what he's doing. He can't dictate in this house. Members in this house has a right to raise whatever they think it's important for them. 
So he can't be told how to say things because of him. Honorable Chacham, thank you. I've listened to both to both points of view. Uh, Order, please, members. Whilst we have freedom of speech in the House, I don't think it is appropriate for racial slurs to be bandied and thrown about. And I discussed and I talked about it earlier on in the day. Um, if I could interpret what was said, if white people were to die, would they get more budget as compared to black and colored? And that is the statement that the member made. And it has a connotation to it. It certainly has. Uh, Honorable Magaka, I am busy speaking, and I am I am talking to how I interpreted that statement. So whether it is a point of order or a fact or an opinion, we would need to deliberate on. I'm going to take guidance from the table, and tomorrow when we get back, I will provide guidance to the House on the statement that was made. But again, we must try and resist from talking about black, white, Indian. We are South African. No, because I would, I would like to believe we should not, and I don't, uh, Honorable Chacha, we are here to build a nation, and I think we do it by recognizing everyone as South Africans firstly. So you might want to call it an opinion, but I'm not going to allow racist comments and slurs to be made in this house. So I will ask the Honorable Dagmo to proceed and I will take guidance and I will revert to the House and I've spoken on it so there is no more discussion. We will allow the Honourable Dagmo to proceed. Um, I have made a ruling, Honourable Magaka. I will come back to the House tomorrow. Can we please allow the Honourable Dagmo to proceed? Thank you. You may proceed, Honourable Dagmo. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I just want to draw your attention as well as everyone in this House that documentation provided to our committee about the statistics of road fatality specifically indicates that 80% of the people who died on our roads were classified as African and colored. The question, that I'm, the question that I'm raising, which I think is legitimate, is that when we look at our constitution and we look at issues of redress, we are obliged to particularly have redress measures in regard to people who are historically disadvantaged, which clearly would be those who have been classified African colored. And I'm saying in the context of road safety, and the issues that have been raised about not only the 132 vacancies, but also the managers of these um, offices, um, that that should be a priority because we can spend, as this adjustment uh, budget shows, 17 million on media campaigns. We can have all the technology, but the reason why this road safety plan is not going to work effectively is that it doesn't have the human resources to back it up. Now, when we get into the issues, and I would agree with Member Max that the manager of GG Mr. Kuchlenberg is one of our best managers. He has managed so well that in excess of 1.6 billion rand in reserves have been built up over the last couple of years. And 750 million of those reserves, Madam Speaker, have been transferred to the Provincial Revenue Fund. Funds like that being invested with a fairly standard asset manager should at least de um, deliver a 10% return, which is 75 million rand in a year. Let let's assume that. I want to tell this House that the cost of equipping, the cost of equipping and training 132 traffic officers, which is a once-off cost, would be 38 million. The cost of then paying those traffic officers for a year would, in fact, be 37 million. I'm arguing if this province and this department was serious about issues of road safety, you wouldn't only have a technologically and a media-driven campaign, you would also employ the officers to actually do, um, to, to perform that. So the reality is that we have an adjustment here of 304 million rand and a simple 38 million to equip those officers and then to put them on the payroll um, um, over, the, over the medium term would have, required, would have been able to be found in the provincial asset reserve. The fact that they haven't been found is a clear indication of this department not focusing on a pathology which by and large affects historically disadvantaged communities. If you look at it, it affects everyone, but in terms of the balance, 
the, the weight of those fatalities falls on historically disadvantaged communities. And that is what the DA leadership is not seeing. So when one of their members stands up and raises issues, which in fact is to the credit because they, they're raising issues of safety which affects our communities, then they are regarded as a, as a troublemaker. And I think that's a slippery slope once you begin to undermine the issue of oversight when these facts are actually pointed out. I would also um, like to draw one's attention to a very uh, difficult issue. Out of asset financing reserves, 75 million um, has, has, has been made available. 70 million of that is going to the George municipality, which is then going to be transferred to the George link. It is two years, and on this we are all united in the committee, that the, the George link has failed to provide annual financial statements um, to the department. The department has promised us that today is the deadline, the 30th of November. And I think it's important that when MEC Grant responds, he needs to tell this House that, number one, have those annual financial statements actually been produced because today was the deadline actually given to us by the department. If those annual financial statements have not been provided, surely this House should express itself and make the argument that that money that is going to be voted for, if the majority is going to vote for this adjustment later on today, that those funds, the 70 million, should not be transferred to the George municipality. How can you continue for two years to allocate funds which end up at George Link, which has failed to provide annual financial statements, and we want to say that we are in favor of good government? Now, when you raise those issues, are you a troublemaker, or are you actually contributing to oversight? The MEC for Finance, I hope he also responds to this issue. I've raised the issue with you, MEC, in, 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 in the initial discussions, that George Link has not accounted for two years, yet we continue to allocate funds in this adjustment as well, which must go to the George municipality. How can we continue to do that when, when the accountability has not actually been exercised? And then at the same time want to punish someone who chairs a committee who raises these issues together with the ANC. These are issues that affect all of us, not a political party. And I think as our democracy matures, we need to see more and more of the kind of oversight from the ANC as well as the DA in the National Assembly and in local and provincial legislatures because that can only strengthen the quality of our democracy if people without fear or favor raise the issues which affect our people. Thank you. Thank you. I see the Honourable Christians. Chairperson, uh, uh, Speaker, thank you. I, I cannot comment on a lot, but I want to comment on the financials of the George Link. You know, I'm so uh, I'm scoped, Chair. We called them in for the financials. And what the members heard, what was in Scopa, is that the funding's got nothing to do with the financial statements. They do the work and you pay. The financial statements is a separate issue. And that is how the ANC come and, and, and misrepresent the facts. The uh, honorable member is misrepresenting the facts. Order. So, so what I'm saying is, as Scopa Chair, we ask them, and the minister will explain what is the problem there. But the important thing was that the financials got nothing to do with the funding. They do the work and they produce the evidence and they get paid. Order, the financials are something to do with us. And, and the members of Scopa knows that. But member Dugmore comes and he comes with facts that skewed, facts that are real. So, Chairper, uh, uh, so, so, so I don't know what they're doing, but the important thing, Chairperson, is that we as the AC support uh, the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Order, order, please, members. Members, can we not cast aspersions? Can we please maintain order in the absence of the EFF? Honourable Olivier, can we maybe proceed? Thank you. Thank you. I have now taken my instruction from the Honourable Olivier. I may proceed. I see the Minister, Minister Grant. Order, please, Honourable Dianke. Sorry, can I, Minister, before you proceed, um, Honourable Christians and the ladies, if we could afford the Minister an opportunity to speak. Thank you. You may proceed, Minister. 
Chair, firstly, I'd like to thank Honourable the members, members. who have taken time and trouble to participate in the adjustments debate. They've made my job actually quite easy, Speaker, because I'm only going to respond to the matters which are related to the adjustment budget. Um, firstly, to the Honourable Max, I will deal with um, the issues around funding of traffic posts for both you and Member Dugmore at the end. I want to address you on the issues about the de novo and the wall. I do remember quite clearly answering questions in Parliament about this quite com comprehensively, and I failed to see with this matter, apart from the delayed letter, has anything to do with the adjustments budget, but I will certainly look into it, but I will certainly look into it to see if that was the case. Um, as far as the funding from the government garage is concerned, that really is a one-off. It, it is not recurring income coming in to my department. And therefore, the funding of traffic posts um, is an ongoing expense. I also want to say that the issue raised by the Honourable Dugmore about the amount of money transferred to George Municipality for GIPTN of that 70 million, 40 million is for infrastructure. It's to support the project. And that money doesn't go to George Link. And as far as I can remember, Speaker, the 30th of November ends at midnight tonight. So therefore, I do not know yet whether they have provided my department with the financial statements. But in the event that they have not provided the financial statements to us, I will not do that. I will operate in terms of the contract which is between George Municipality and George Link because they are the operators on the ground. Right. Then I want to also talk about the so-called, and I want to say categorically to this House, that if there is one thing that Order, both please. myself and my department are very sensitive about, and it's, it's the question of the deaths on our road. There is not one item that those come on my phone in the middle of the night. I see them day in, day out. So if the members of this House think that myself and my department are not sensitive to this matter, yeah. we most certainly are. And we will continue to do what we can. Because road safety, in our opinion, is not just a matter of more traffic officers. And many of the items in today's budget highlight the important additional steps that we are taking towards a holistic solution to our traffic problems. And the members of the Standing Committee must surely remember their recent visit to Caledon, where they were taken through the district safety plan. And they must also remember certainly another presentation given to the Standing Committee as to the strategy going forward and how we intend to deal holistically with the shocking carnage on our roads. Speaker, then let me also say that I really... No, I'm just collecting to see what's worth responding to, actually. Um, Minister Grant, please I really address the Chair in speaker, your response. Thank you. I want to finally um, say to the provincial parliament that I've taken notes of all their criticisms and comments and that I will address it with my department in due course. And I would like to thank, thank Member Max in particular for his advice and management of the standing committee and wish him well in his new endeavours. Speaker, I propose this budget for consideration, the adjustment budget of the House. Thank you. Thank you.